I needed that. I needed him to be the one that got me out of that hole because if I tried to do anything, I would just keep digging. I would just end up deeper and deeper. Are any of you suffering, you should pray. Are any of you happy, you should sing praise. I'm Amy, Amy Bryan, married to Jacob Bryan. I have been coming to CCLF now for a handful of years. I grew up in a Mormon household, so I did have a concept of God. I'd been around church environment most of my life. I was invited to Lake of the Trees, actually, when I was about 11 years old. I was sponsored by a friend. It was just this fun Bible camp that I got to go to. I was like, cool, sweet, fun and games. Um, but it never really meant a lot to me. But it was through the years of going there that I had started to develop this reality of like, okay, God is more than just this big man in the sky. My whole life he had just been more of like this distant figure, not so much relational, but just the one that you would send your eloquently worded prayers up to and hope that something good happens out of it. Um, so there was never any real connection there. It was, okay, yeah, he provides for us, but beyond that, I don't really know who he is or what he is or how he actually personally affects me. Through the years started to become more real to me. Chapel time wasn't just this 30 minutes that I had to sit through and go, okay, now they're gonna talk about God for a few and then I get to go play games. But I started to realize that like God was an invested creator, like he didn't just create us and leave us to our own devices to send up prayers every once in a while when we needed something, rather that he was invested in us as humanity. I'd kind of gone on a downward spiral around the age of 13 after a friend of mine, the rock of my existence essentially, had left and I, that hit me really hard and I found myself going down trails of really severe depression and it was it was really hard and I didn't see that God was doing anything. Everything was really hard, so I was like, why, why would I want to be involved in that? Um, and so I tried to distance myself from church. My mom requested that I still go, so I figured, okay, I guess if, if I'm gonna do anything, I'll, I'll start going to this youth group um, here at CCLF. It didn't make everything automatically better. I still, I still really struggled. And there was a buildup of years and I was going to youth and I had this community, but I still was really isolated internally. I just, there was something severely lacking. I had numbed myself to most of reality. I was, I remember going to camp and it was fun. I remember going to youth group and it was exciting. We got to talk about God and it was it was good, but it, it still hadn't really hit me, the reality of my need for him. It was New Year's 2015 to 2016. I had been invited to camp uh, for their New Year's celebration. Um, and they had done a worship set and it was it was really good. I, I had, I've always loved music and I've loved worship, but it was that night at camp uh, they had invited us to come up to the front if we needed prayer or anything like that, if we wanted to just invite God into what was going on that, that we could. And I remember sitting there and thinking to myself, I was like, oh no, like I'm, I'm good, like I, I, I know what I need, it's fine. And before I could even really fully finish that thought, I had found myself walking up to the front and I was surprised by that. I was like, whoa, what, what's happening? Um, and I just remember getting to the front and just kind of crumpling into a ball on the floor and just this realization of I had worked myself so deep into this hole of I was struggling, I was numb to anything, I hadn't experienced any positive lasting emotions in so long. I felt isolated, I was really struggling with depression and my self-esteem and my just how I viewed myself and the world and 
I, I was at a point where I hadn't even planned to make it past the age of 17. Like I didn't see any way out of anything. And I hit the floor and it just was this reality like smashed into me like a freight train of like, the only one that can get me out of this is God. I just sat on the floor for who knows how long, just in a puddle of tears, just like, God, I need you. And this is the only thing I need. And I'm, I don't know what to do except just trust that you can do this, that through the things that I've learned about you, through the things that I've heard through youth and through relationship and being shown examples through people like Jacob's family that showed me that your heart is consistent and loving. And there was a moment where a couple people came to just pray for me and place their hands on my back. And then at some point while they were just praying for me, it felt almost as if there was a third pair of hands that were placed on my back. And I, look, I peeked my eyes open and I was like, okay, like who's here now? And I didn't actually see anyone, but as I felt that pressure, there was this sudden washing of like joy just over me. It filled the room. I kind of felt like I was gonna pass out. It was so overwhelming. Um, but I was, I, I just couldn't stop laughing and my body felt like it was buzzing. And I was like, I haven't experienced real joy in years. I was like, I couldn't have fac fabricated that myself. He, he's the only one that can bring true joy. And I've read that in scripture and I've heard that and all good things come from him. And that was kind of just a glimpse into that reality. And honestly, after that point, it, it didn't get easier. It, I know that it can sometimes feel like, oh, it should just get better. Like now God's got it. But there was just this continued hope this reality of, okay, God is in this and he does have it. And the year after that actually was probably one of the hardest of my life, but there was this soul deep realization and acknowledgement that regardless of my situation, God is here and God has plans for me in this. Looking back on it now, I can definitely see that the pain and the struggle that I was experiencing was God going through the landscape of my life and uprooting a lot of weeds, a lot of the things that I'd found comfort in and found safety in that were superficial, that were not Him, were being taken away. And that hurt a lot because they were the things that I wanted, as my flesh wanted, there was still this hope that like, okay, there's greater coming, that God is working on this landscape. He's, he's this gardener and you have to go through the process of tilling the ground. You have to go through the process of removing the weeds. Only through trusting in him as that gardener and giving him the rain would I be able to eventually flourish. And throughout that time, a lot of me changed, a lot of my perspectives of the world, my identity, a lot of that just shifted. And I started to learn that like, I am a beloved daughter of the King. And it was a really cool moment somewhere in the last couple years where I learned that the name Amy actually means beloved. And so it was like, you read scripture and we're God's beloved children and to learn that like he's been calling me that since before I was even born and then I was given the name beloved it was really cool I recognized the person that I was before but through the last two and a half years or so I've been in a lot of ways completely rewritten as an individual where God has shown me the foundations of how he created me and grown me so much more, wants to be involved in the things that I experience and the things that I know and do. And it's been a process of continual surrender and continual trust in him as creator and father. God has really shown me that there's a lot more um, life to experience when you're with him. And it was life that I didn't even really 
grasp before he kind of knocked me in 2016, where he just went, you need me, and I, I realized that deep in my soul. It, wow, I do need him. And it's something I have to remind myself of daily, uh, that especially in better times than when I was just feeling like I was absolutely drowning, is I still need him. I still need his grace and his mercy over me that I am still growing and he's still working on that landscape of my life, that he's in it and he's, he's growing me. And I get to submit to that and trust in that and live life in him. <laughs>